Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day. It is great to be with you in your living room, at your kitchen table, in your car, wherever uh, we find you today as uh, you progress and listen to your word for the day today. And, uh, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 23, we've gone through several of the passages there, and it's an interesting chapter of Jesus really taking on a different tone to his teaching as he rebukes and offers his woes over the Pharisees. And maybe that's a little different tone than we're used to seeing Jesus in. And maybe you think of Jesus and you think of someone who's just always like happy and cheerful and loving and joyful. And he is those things, but also he is someone who cares deeply about truth and is uh, deeply convicted to communicate that truth, which is what we see there in his interaction with the Pharisees. And we get a few passing verses before we get to chapter 24 that give us another glimpse of, of Jesus experiencing um, emotions that aren't joyful, aren't the chipper, you know, angelic, wonderful emotions there, but experiencing some lament and some mourning. I want to read these couple of verses to you at the end of Matthew chapter 23. He says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, this is the city that kills the prophets and stones those who sent it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left a desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. See, Jesus here is lamenting Jerusalem, and really he's lamenting the disbelief and the rejection of truth that is represented in the, the people of God that, that are there. And this isn't simply the city of Jerusalem, but the, the establishment of, of religion in that day. He says that the people who killed the prophets and stoned those who came before, the people who said, hey, we're going to reject the message that comes from God to his people. And see, he's lamenting really because of the disbelief, because of the rejection of truth and saying we're not interested in following God on the terms of truth and the, the actual information about who he is. And at the end of the day, he's lamenting because God desires for all people to, to come to saving faith and come to a knowledge of truth. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 through 6 tell us that. It says God desires this. This is his heart's desire and hope for all people. Um, but we know that not all people do that. Because in that day, they rejected Jesus on the basis of history or tradition or their religious practices. And today, people reject him for those same reasons. They also reject him for other reasons. They reject him for uh, science and, and to choose that. We reject him just because they don't like the idea of him and they choose atheism. They reject him because they want to choose uh, a path of spirituality or good works and karma and choosing that path instead. And at the end of the day, every time that happens, Jesus laments. He laments because it is his desire for all to come to saving faith and to a knowledge of the truth. But the only way to come to that saving faith is through the knowledge of the truth, the truth that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world. The, the truth is that he is, he is the only path to salvation, the only path to God as he communicates to us and is demonstrated on the cross. And so let's be people we don't cause Jesus to lament because of our belief, because of our resistance, because of our opposition to maybe even the hard truth from Scripture that comes to us at times. But let's be people who embrace truth, who allow Jesus to, to bring us, like he mentions, like a hen bringing her brood under her wings, letting Jesus bring us under his umbrella of salvation, of hope, of direction, of guidance. Let's be people who pursue Jesus, who submit to him and surrender our life to him, in the easy ways, in the ways that encourage us, in the ways that convict us and challenge how we view the world, because he is the truth. And he desires for us to come to a knowledge of that truth and to a saving faith. I hope that's an encouragement to you, Calvary. We'll see you next time.